All right, welcome back. Yes, we don't want to waste any time, so I'm going to go straight to our time zone calculations. Now, this will be chapter 10 of our tourism textbooks, the CAPS approved textbook. And time zone calculations is based on all the theory that we've just covered in the previous session, which was chapter 9. So it's always good to keep in mind everything you've learned, all the definitions, where's our GMT, where's our equator, when we go east, we plus, when we go west, we minus, and then the definition of daylight saving time, because you'll see later on when we mention dates and months, that will be an indication for us whether daylight saving time should be applied. Of course, they sometimes are nice to you and they tell you in the question paper, apply DST, in other words, daylight saving time. All right, guys, so I've prepared a few questions for you in terms of time zone calculations. The questions I'm going to do with you now is basically to teach you how to do time zone calculations. Now, guys, my way is not the only way, and every pe person who knows a bit more than me about maths will be able to tell you that as well. If you have a, a, a way of doing your questions and you get to the same answer, 100% correct. What I'm going to teach you today are a few simple steps that works for me and for the learners that I've taught before. So guys, when you do time zone calculations, there are certain steps that you need to follow. If you follow the, these steps by the book, you will see that it's actually very easy to get to the final answer and get the correct answer. All right, I'm going to start at the entry level type of time zone calculations and we're going to work our way through to calculations where it indicates you are flying from one place to another. When you arrive there, what will the local or standard time be in that country? Okay, but that is for later. So let's get to the easy ones first. Guys, the first type of calculation, and you have to do this in any case for any type of time zone calculation. So there's only one step to this, is when you have to calculate the time difference between two given points. Now it's very important to know you cannot work out a difference if you don't have two points. All right, in this example, it says here, yeah, work out the time difference between Johannesburg and New York. That's our two locations. Now, before we even try to attempt the calculation, we have to go to our time zone map. All right, that's why I told you earlier on, it's so important to learn how to identify things on your map. So first of all, we need to identify our zero degree line of longitude or the GMT. Again, you can write it out for yourself just to know this is where we measure from. Now, the two locations that they presented to us there was Johannesburg and New York. All right, so first of all, let's go look for Johannesburg. Now, Johannesburg, if you look closely on your map, you'll find here in South Africa, in other words, over there. And if we go all the way up, we'll see it says plus two. So Johannesburg is plus two. Now if we look for New York, we go all the way to America and you'll see over there we find New York. If we go all the way up in that white space, you'll find a minus five. So New York is minus five. That's the actual time that it's measured from the GMT. So in other words, South Africa is two time zones east from the GMT and New York are five time zones west from the GMT. Now the question says, we have to calculate the time difference. Now if you just look at this, it should already make sense that to get the distance from New York up to South Africa, that total distance, we have to add those two together. All right, so this is how you would write it out. Calculate the time difference between two given locations Johannesburg and New York, you say Johannesburg is GMT plus two, because that's two zones from the GMT east, and New York is GMT minus five, which means five time zones west from, from the GMT. All right, so now it's very simple. When two locations are both sides of the GMT, in other words, the GMT line are in the middle, or you can even look at the symbols. The one is a plus, the other one is a minus. Then it's very simple. You'd literally add the two numbers together. You're not gonna say plus two plus minus five, that's mathematical, and that is where most of us make the mistake. 
So the plus and the minus here in tourism, in time zone calculations, indicates direction. So the moment you know that these two are different sites from the GMT, we want to add these two numbers together. We said South Africa is GMT plus two, New York's GMT minus five. We've got a two and a five, and we literally add the two together, and we get seven hours, and we can even use an acronym if you want. We call that the time difference. 